Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. It's a joyous and sad day in fandom. Joyous because we got a new trailer. Sad because it's our last one. But the film is almost right around the corner. And until then, we have a ton of new theories to discuss. I'm Susan Chappelle with Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll be notified when videos post and won't miss out on the next clues. As I'm noting in every video now, with the richness of detail that has been released, there may be spoilers ahead. So proceed here and in the comments below with caution. Also, don't click away before the end of the video because I'm giving away a Funko Pop Matigo cat. I don't know about you, but I was a bit overwhelmed with how much new footage they crammed into this final trailer. I'd been expecting a few new clips among several we'd seen before, but not the case at all. So where to begin? I'm going to start with a major theory I got wrong and then take the trailer more or less in order. However, I'll only cover new scenes and clues I haven't covered before. Okay, I freely admit it. I was totally wrong about this one. I've never liked the Maledictus' Nagini theory, and even though I've known about this reveal for weeks, thanks to the leaked David Yates interview, I still wasn't completely convinced that there wouldn't be a twist somewhere in the story leading from Maledictus to Voldemort's killer snake. The reason I protested is that this transformation seemed to me to, one, go against Rowling's key theme of redemption for a cursed character, and two, was a bit too obvious so early on in the series. But this tweet from Rowling seems to indicate that it is so, and she's known the backstory for several years. I'm sure there's still got to be some twist up her sleeve somewhere. For example, this tweet, a maledictus can only be female and is passed from mother to daughter. There's still obviously more going on that she's not telling, but this will require a bit of research, so I'll get back to you on this one. We start off with Newt and Dumbledore on the bus with Dumbledore's whimsy fully on display as he hands Newt Lamel's card in case he wants to drop in for a cup of tea. Ha! As I analyzed this symbol in a couple of prior videos, including the one I posted last night, I won't go into too much detail here, but Thiago Lupin pointed out in the comments that this card indicates Flamel's home is under the Fidelius charm, and this card will get Newt in, which I think is a great catch. Also, look at the card in this trailer compared to the one from the former. Notice that the alchemy symbol is pointing in a different direction. Could this be a magical calling card that acts as a compass, giving the bearer the direction to the home, turning as they go along? It's a magical GPS. Also, Bestiary caught this tantalizing glimpse of the wristband Dumbledore wears that we saw in the Mirror of Erisid scene, a hint of Grindelwald Dumbledore carries with him always. We then progress to Grindelwald's escape scene with some new insights. First, we get a better view of the setup. Here is Madame Pickery and probably Spielman heading toward the carriage as the elevator rises, bringing Grindelwald. Notice that we have wizards with broomsticks nearby, answering the question as to whether they were guards. And poor little bug flying into the magical protections enclosing Grindelwald. Finally, this later snippet seems to make it clear what we already guessed, that Abernathy is Grindelwald's accomplice from within who holds his Elder Wand and aids in his escape. Credence seems to be locked in a cage, perhaps explaining why he explodes in anger, breaking the cage in an earlier trailer. And then he whispers the name we've discussed, Nagini. Or perhaps it's Nagini who is locked inside. Then we witness Nagini's powerful and gruesome transformation. With Nagini being the star attraction and a snake of this magnitude and power, Imagine the cage and magical protection Skander must use to control her. Back to Grindelwald escaping. First, someone seems to be dangling from the Thestral coach. Then we see Grindelwald casting a spell on a snake or snakes prepared to strike him. Bestiary wonders if these could be the rune spores we saw in a deleted scene from the first film. 
I think she's on to something. But as the snakes don't match in coloring, I'm wondering something a bit different. We only see Madame Pickery before entering the carriage, not in the bodies thrown from it. Is it possible that she's an Animagus and this is her transform? Then, when she's about to strike Grindelwald, he uses her to take out the carriage driver? Grindelwald manages to get control of the carriage, quite impressively. First, by flooding one of the occupants out, and then tossing another out as he stands on the edge precariously. As this is our first glimpse of the Elder One in action, the magic has to be impressive. And it is. Then, in one of the scenes I'm most excited to see, we get more insight into the amphitheater, where Grindelwald looks indeed like he's conducting a diabolical symphony to raise the dead or open the portal to the spirit realm, just as we've discussed, without the artistic element. We get a brief snippet of a mountain exploding. Bestiary wonders if this is the construction of Grindelwald's fortress, Nuringard. What intrigues me about this is that the set reports mention concept art showing Queenie in Nuremgard. Is that what we're seeing later on in the trailer here? Perhaps Queenie is busting out. Chaos erupts on the streets of Paris as it appears the Zulu escapes. And notice Tina passing by the circus act. And then Newt and Tina seem to have an unexpected meetup in the Lestrange family's secret hideout. Or are these scenes juxtaposed to throw us off? Does someone else interrupt her snooping? Notice that Credence seems to have the raven by his image on the wall as well. Bird symbolism everywhere. Queenie seems enchanted by one flapping on one of Grindelwald's black banners. And in a deep reveal of the Mirror of Erised scene, we see a young Dumbledore gaze longingly after a young Grindelwald played by the same actors who played them in Deathly Hallows. This was a well-kept secret and might mean that in this film we see more from the younger versions in flashbacks. More hints in the French ministry that Lita plays the key role in breaking Newt and Tina into the archives. Then we get the bucket port key scene, which we'd already heard about. I've seen a few people speculating as to whether this may be a Weasley ancestor, which would be fun. You've got to watch this scene in slow-mo. Jacob's expression is hilarious. What do you want to bet he gets seasick? It's just like Rowling's humor to have the port key be a bucket to catch his vomit. And in beautiful golden imagery, we get what I think bestiary pegged as the tracking scene we've been hearing about. I'm almost sure they're searching for Queenie, but have to find the kappa to do so. Dalton Perkinson points out that Newt uses gold dust to illuminate what is probably the Kappa's footprints and employs the Niffler, a bloodhound for gold, to finally bag the Kappa. Thanks so much to Eloise Raysford for pointing out that Pottermore said it's the Kappa. We see Grimson entering the wall to the room we previously analyzed where Credence explodes the building. Dalton Perkinson believes that Grimson waits in the wall until Nagini approaches and he can reach out and catch her which to me is terrorizing. I think Grimson was hired by Skinder to bring back his escaped star attraction, Nagini. And does he succeed? There are two very curious things to notice that flash by in this new perspective of the explosion. First, you can see a hint of Credence's Obscurus up in the middle. Then second, there's someone sitting amid the rubble to the right, someone who seems to have four fingers. Watch it in slow-mo. Now, watch it again, zoomed in. Here are the four fingers I'm seeing. As this doesn't look like our mystery woman from the poster, who we discussed before, she must have relatives. Next up, a cute little picture of Pickett literally holding on by a thread, perhaps after saving the day again. And then this delightful scene of Newt seeming to surprise Tina at Flamel's. A couple of interesting points here. Is Tina reading Flamel's grimoire? And notice the crystal ball so conveniently placed beside the cozy chair. Has Flamel recently used it to direct a message with Dumbledore, as we speculated earlier? If Newt did need a Fidelius permit card to get in 
How did Tina? I have long suspected that use of comma is in connection with Flamel and just haven't had time to do a video on it. I think this confirms it, as comma and Tina seem to have met earlier. We're treated to what may be Newt's version of Harry on Buckbeak as he rides the Kelpie. This is followed by what appears to be a vision of the war to come, a future air raid in a bombed out city. Is this one of Grindelwald's visions? But Newt is watching it. How? Maybe through Flamel's crystal ball. Just whose beastly foot is this? And where is it with Newt among the rubble? I'll be honest with you, I'm just not sure. But I'm wondering if we're seeing a hint of Lita's beastly form revealed in the graveyard scene. And in an exciting development, are we seeing those zodiac circles and their beasts that we've talked about forever put into play? The Nundo from the magical zodiac in the French ministry seems to make a magical jump through time and come to life, almost Doctor Who-ish. A different version of the Hogwarts teacher running scene, which in a prior video I thought might lead to what got Newt expelled, is shown before what must be Lita's memory of the incident. Maybe in the lake, to me, Lita is desperately reaching out to someone, perhaps trying to save them. Here's a new thought. What if the student Lita nearly killed was Newt? And now, back to the amphitheater, she makes amends by saving his life. More people turning into twisting pillars of dust. See my prior video on this. And what's Newt to do? He'll think of something. We get more insight into the ritual, with Grindelwald spinning a ring of fire around that ceremonial dais, building the blue fire that I believe will create the fiery dragon in the graveyard. Then, what seems to be Credence turning to join Grindelwald and Nagini trying to hold him back. But consider for a moment, Ezra Miller has indicated in interviews that he trusts no one in the Wizarding World. Nagini seems to be his sole friend, and how violently he erupted earlier on when she may have been taken by Grimson. What wouldn't he do here to save her? Especially when Grindelwald has graciously offered to let them all leave in exchange for the Obscurus he always wanted. In last night's video, I analyzed how I felt we'd see Lita burst her bonds in some sort of monstrous form that is embodied in the red shooting smoke and flames of the graveyard to battle the blue fiery dragon released by Grindelwald and his skull. And here we see stronger images that m this may be so as the brothers commander seek to battle one dragon but not hurt the other, in my opinion. Like the trailer before, this one ends on a humorous scene displaying Newt's earlier relationship with his brother. I think this probably comes about midway through because by the end, the brothers are acting together. And this scene also probably confirms what I posted yesterday, that Theseus was sent to track down and arrest his vagrant younger brother. But I want to end on two snippets I skipped over earlier, the bridge at Hogwarts. Rishia tweeted earlier today that she thought these two scenes came together, that Nagini is on the bridge at Hogwarts and will meet Dumbledore. I think this is a most excellent catch. And here's what I'm wondering. To me, this seems to follow the cemetery scene. Are the survivors coming to confront Dumbledore? And if so, notice who's mi missing. Credence, Queenie, and Lita. Look how devastated Jacob and Nagini and Theseus appear. Here's my guess. Lita's dead or transformed. Credence has gone to the dark side, at least for now, and probably to protect Nagini. And Queenie's fate is most likely left uncertain, the great cliffhanger. Also, is this confrontation where Dumbledore finally reveals firmly why he cannot be the one to confront Grindelwald, the unbreakable vow he made with Grindelwald as a teen. See my prior video for more. But one more possibility. Instead of the survivors suddenly flying to Hogwarts to confront Dumbledore, could he have brought them there? Is this further evidence that he showed up near the very end of the battle, as evidenced by the phoenix we discussed in the last video, and transported them all back with him? So what do you think? Did this last trailer amaze you? 
And what surprises do you think we still have in store for the actual film? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please check out my new fan shop on Amazon for the Matago Cat I'm about to give away, as well as books and Funko Pops and wands and all things Fantastic Beasts. To celebrate our last trailer, I'm giving away this awesome Matago Funko Pop to one of this channel's subscribers. The Matago is special to me because, in contrast to Nagini, it's one of my favorite theories I got right. Entry is simple. All you have to do is subscribe, click the bell notification, and comment on the video below. That's it. Anyone around the world can enter, so be aware that it may take longer for the Matago to find his way home to you. The deadline for entry is October 14, 2018. For a description of the Matago and a full list of how this giveaway will work, see the description box below.